All right, I'm back from my holiday break, and it's time to kick some ass. Welcome everyone, my name's Sylph, and this is my attempt to beat a hardcore Nuzlocke of Pokemon Emerald with only Bug-type Pokemon. The full rule set for this run is listed down below, but put simply, only the first Bug-type encounter in each route or area can be caught. If a Pokemon feigns, it must be permanently boxed. No items except held items in battle. Party Pokemon levels are limited to the next gym leader or the final league member's ace. And finally, the battle mode must be put on set at all times. Ah, the bug type, known among Pokemon fans as being one of the worst in history. Based on our track record, especially Emerald, the Gen 3 games can be some of the hardest for hardcore Nuzlocke's too. This should be fun. The Gen 3 games have a really cool variety of bug types, especially after Gens 1 and 2, which pretty much shared the same selection with a few exceptions. All of these fully evolved Pokemon are technically available in Emerald, however, one of them is only available in the post-game, Masquerain. Weirdly enough, Surskit is available really early on in Ruby and Sapphire, but only shows up in Swarms in Emerald through mixing records, and Swarms are a post-game feature. Aside from that, we have no restrictions, although as per Nuzlocke rules, we can only get one encounter per route, and some of these show up on the same route as each other, so we'll see what we get. I have a feeling this is gonna be tough, but hey, the challenge is what we're here for. And if you guys are looking for a challenge yourselves, you'll love today's video sponsor, Raid Shadow Legends, which you can download for free using my QR code or the link in the description. Just like Pokemon, Raid's got a ton of awesome characters you can play as, including over 600 unique champions. If you watch my videos, you're likely very familiar with turn-based RPGs, but Raid takes the genre to a whole new level with many different game types and super challenging bosses, including an insane new boss, the Hydra. The Hydra is a giant beast with multiple different heads, each one a complete boss battle on its own. It sounds crazy, so let's see what we're up against. Hydra has six different heads, each with their own abilities. Let's take a look at two of them in particular. The Head of Blight is all about poison. It poisons you, leeches you, and protects itself with a poison cloud which makes it super hard to hit. The Head of Mischief, on the other hand, loves your buffs and wants them all for itself. It steals them and spreads those stolen buffs to all its other heads. Unreal. Wicked bosses that require inventive strategies is just one of the many reasons why I love Raid. The game is so dynamic with so many different things to do and different challenges to take on. More than other games I've played which usually have kind of one path that you can take, Raid allows you to engage in different game modes and areas like the Doom Tower, PvP Arena, Dungeons, and even working with your own clan to get sweet weekly rewards. As if that wasn't enough, there's new things being added all the time like giveaways, events, tournaments, etc., including a current giveaway for a super limited edition champion based on esports legend Simple. All you have to do is log in for 7 days between now and January 28th and he's yours. There has never been a better time to get started and if you use my link or scan the QR code on screen, new players will get a free starter pack worth almost $30 to kickstart your game. We're talking a free champion Tayroll, 200k silver, 1 XP boost, 1 energy refill, and 1 ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. You'll find your rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Click the link in the description below and I hope to see you in Teleria. All right, let's do this Pokemon Emerald, one of my favorite games in the entire franchise. Having moved from the Johto region, our neglectful mother welcomes us into the new home and... Wait a minute, where's Daddy Machoke? Who are these movers? Mom? And hold on, where's the Among Us poster in my room? Okay, I'm not liking this at all. Upon saving Professor Birch from the creatures he's supposed to be an expert on, we get to choose our starter Pokemon. I decide to pick Trico because that will give Mei Torchic definitely the hardest challenge for our future team. I nicknamed Trico Ali, and for once I'm actually happy that we don't have Pokeballs yet. Technically the run doesn't start until we get them in order to get our first viable encounter, so this means we don't have to take on Mei with a damn Wurmple, and can instead smash her into the ground with Ali. Mei then snitches on us for destroying her, and for violating the basic principles of human decency, Birch forces her to give us some Pokeballs, meaning our run has officially begun. Our first encounter is available right away on Route 101, a beautiful Wurmple which I catch and nickname Heimlich. Heimlich ends up having a hearty neutral nature, and given that we have no idea what this thing will evolve into, I'll take it. With that, we're forced to deposit Ali into the PC. Heimlich, it's just you and me now. Grinding a Wurmple up is no fun matter, but I make sure to take on level 2 Wurmples exclusively so we can get as many HP EVs as possible, which I know will be useful for whatever he evolves into given what's coming up soon. On our way through Route 102, I'm reminded of a painful fact. That we could have gotten Surskit here if this was Ruby and Sapphire, but nope, only Lotad in this game. 
A water type would have been real helpful right about now, but oh well. While grinding, Heimlich ends up evolving and turns out to be a Cascoon, meaning we got the Dust Dox line. Pretty cool. With the extra defense from evolving, I'm feeling ready to take on trainer battles, although weirdly enough, after evolving from a Wurmple, it actually has a lower attack stat, so it makes battles manageable but tedious. We eventually arrive in Petalburg City where I realize what a mess our family situation is. We've got our real dad, who is currently acting as more of a dad to Wally, then we've got our stepdad Machoke, who our mom evidently left, and now we've got a stepdad Vigoroth after having just moved from another region. Sheesh. Also, poor Wally decides his best course of action is to catch a psychic type when we're gonna have a mono bug team. Yikes, my dude. After picking up some Oran Berries and enduring some crazy close battles, we arrive at the Petalburg Woods. Now, one weird situation is that because we play with the Species Claws, we technically can't catch another Wormpole to get Beautifly. However, thankfully, Cascoon and Silcoon are available here, so we can catch a Silcoon, which is part of the same evolutionary line, but technically doesn't violate any of our rules. We successfully catch one and nickname it Ada, and Ada has an adamant nature, plus attack and minus special attack, which is weird. Beautifly is bug and flying, which are both physical types in this game, however it does have a higher special attack stat, so yeah. Because of this weird rule situation, we have to switch and struggle train the damn thing, as it only has Harden until it evolves. It's an absolutely brutal grind, but it does at least give both of our Pokemon EVs, and while helping out, Heimlich ends up hitting level 10 and evolves into a Dustox, giving us some Poison Stab too. A little bit later, an Ada also evolves, this time giving us a Beautifly for some Flying-type stab, and learns Absorb too, which I think is gonna come in handy. Mm, come on! I need the Miracle Seed just beyond these stupid trees! With two fully evolved Pokemon already, we arrive in Rustboro City, the location of the first gym. Before the gym though, we can get one more encounter by going up to the northeast of the city to Route 116. Here, we can get none other than a Ninkada, a bug and ground type, which we catch and nickname Thumper. Thumper ends up having a gentle nature, plus special defense and minus defense, which is meh. After training up a bit, it's time for the Rustboro City Gym. Now this is a rock type gym, but thankfully most of the trainers themselves don't have rock moves, so using Heimlich with Confusion as a special move does well against these high physical defense Pokemon. In no time we reach the first gym leader, Roxanne, who is a terrifying threat for us as rock is super effective against our entire team. I did a lot of special attack EV training heading into this battle against Abra on Route 116, so let's see what we can manage. She leaves with a Geodude and I send out Ada. Ada is 4 times weak to Rock, yes, but also has 4 times super effective Absorb against Geodude and... Uh oh, it survived. And hits us with 4 times super effective Stab Rock Tomb, but we survive on just 5 HP before our Oran Berry, although our speed is lowered. I know she's gonna potion though, so I can go for one more and again regain some health back as she goes down. Whew. Her next Geodude comes out and I have no choice, even though I seem to have miscalculated the EVs, I go for Absorb again, she survives on like 1 HP, lands another Rock Tomb, we survive on just 2 HP and can take her out with one more. Man oh man. Now, it's time for her final Pokemon, a Nose Pass, which actually has surprisingly good special defense, and is only regularly weak to Absorb, so I'm forced to switch and send out Thumper. She actually misses her first Rock Tomb, so I can get a free Harden on the next turn, as she does the same. She eventually uses Block though, which means we can't escape. She also uses Tackle and gets a critical hit. Are you kidding me? That bypasses our defense boosts, of course. However, now I can start using Leech Life, which does like nothing, but it does give us 1 HP recovery each turn. This was an insane grind, but the plan does work, as we do equal damage to each other at max defense, but Leech Life gives us recovery, so we pull through for the win. Wild. I wasn't sure this one would be possible. In Rusturf Tunnel, we've got to rescue Pico, and this has always bothered me. Why does this dude step back like that? It might not seem like a big deal, but like, from a programming perspective, why? Why can't we just walk to where he was standing? What does the one step backward accomplish? Any game developers, please help me out here. Upon catching a Zigzagoon for HMs, I teach it Cut so we can get access to the additional Petalburg Woods area so we can get the Miracle Seed item to boost grass moves. That would have been real helpful like 5 minutes ago, wouldn't it? For saving Pico, Mr. Brani agrees to take us to Doofer Town and... Oh wait, never mind, the power of my dad's phone call stops the entire boat in its tracks. 
The end of the fourth dimension phone call brings us to Duford, and here we can run into Steven to give him the letter from his dad, who, now that I think about it, is the creator of the PokéNav. Why couldn't you two just call each other with the technology that he spent his life creating? Anyway, this menial task rewards us with the XP share, which I attach to Thumper for now. Our next objective is the Doofer Gym, a fighting gym, and not only does Ada four times resist fighting, but with an adamant nature, rips through them with super effective gust. It's time for the second gym leader, Brawly, who I'm feeling pretty okay about. We have two four times resistances and one regular resistance on our team to their type after all. He leaves with a Machop, and I send out Ada. I hit him with Stun Spore off the bat to paralyze, and he can hardly do any damage at all on us. To be safe, I now use the chance to use Harden, and he starts using Bulk Up. With him paralyzed, this works out just fine for us as we can use Absorb to get back some health and then start hitting him with Gust, which still does good damage and eventually brings him into the red. Although Seismic Toss is definitely scary, doing 16 HP damage regardless of the defense boosts. In the end, we're able to take him down with just a few more Absorbs, followed by a Gust thanks to Paralysis, leaving us at full health in the end. From here, Metatite is a one-hit KO with Gust, and Makuhita tanks one before merely using Bulk Up, so another does the job. Ada is a legend. That went much better than Roxanne, I can say that much. Upon arriving at the beaches of Slayport, we can pick up the soft sand item, which should be useful for Ninkata as it's part ground. In the museum, we can also get the Thief TM, which I think is going to be crucial for us to steal type boosting moves off wild Pokemon. Also, the museum is meant for historic things, and the most monumental thing in here is not the items within it, but Archie's words. Here, we can witness the first ever use of the word simp in its modern context. Truly amazing. On our way to Mauville, we get a new evolution as Thumper evolves into a Ninjask. However, weirdly enough, this evolution itself gives us a brand new encounter as well. You see, if you evolve a Ninkata with an open slot in your party and an extra Pokeball in your bag, a Shedinja will appear out of nowhere in your party, probably one of the rarest Pokemon to have in a monotype hardcore Nuzlocke to be honest. Ours ends up having a gentle nature plus special defense and minus defense, but those stats don't matter at all. For those of you who weren't aware, Shedinja has just one HP point forever. That's because it has an ability called Wonder Guard, which makes it immune to every move that isn't super effective on it. This is going to be interesting. I don't think I've ever used one in a playthrough before, and I'm thoroughly excited about it. Before reaching Mauville, we have a battle with Mei on Route 110. All of our Pokemon are weak to her lead, a Wingull, so I lead with Heimlich. I use Harden to raise our defense, and then she uses Growl. I hit her with Confusion for about half, then Wing Attack doesn't do a whole lot with our raised defense. I then use Moonlight for recovery, but she went for Wing Attack again. Our next Confusion brings her to a sliver, but confuses, so Wingull takes itself down. In comes the big threat, Combuskin, which is why I chose Heimlich. We have good special defense and super effective confusion, and with the help of an Orenberry, we're able to survive two embers on just 10 HP and take it out with three confusions since we outspeed on the final turn. In comes Lombre next, who is easily handled by Ada. Good thing I didn't send out Shedinja there, as it had Astonish. Gotta be very careful with him. With that, we finally arrive in Mauville City, and before heading to the gym, we can go east to Route 117 for a new encounter. Now here, there are two potential encounters, Volbeat and Illumise. The former is a 1% chance to find, while the latter is an 18% chance, so yeah. This weird a thing it is. Volbeat gets Tail Glow of all things too, so it's kind of unfortunate. I catch Illumise and nickname it Dot, and Dot has a rash nature, plus special attack and minus special defense, which isn't bad, although Illumise's level up learn set is disgusting. Our last task is to head back to Slayport so we can use the Name Raider to nickname Shedinja since we didn't get the chance to when it appeared out of nowhere. Molt it is. The Mauville Gym is upon us, an electric type gym, and honestly since most opposing Pokemon don't have a way to hit Molt, we can whittle most of the trainers down with them. The gym leader is Watson, a battle I am absolutely terrified for. His team is ridiculous with two fully evolved Pokemon, well at least in Gen 3, and Magneton literally resists every single move that we have. I figured we might as well have as powerful as possible a resisted move, so I hit up the game corner for hours to get enough coins to buy Psychic, which I taught to Heimlich. Now in case you're thinking Shedinja would be great here, nope. Voltorb has Rollout, and Magneton has Supersonic, which could cause us to hit ourselves, so we have to use a different plan. I theorycrafted for a long time for this battle, and nothing was a guarantee. It's time to just try my best shot. Watson leads with his Voltorb, and I lead with Heimlich. Keeping in mind he has Self-Destruct, I go for Harden on the first turn. 
I know there's no way he can two-shot me with anything else, so this way I raise my defense and then hit him with Psychic for less than half. He then hits us with a crit down to just 21 HP, our next Psychic barely doesn't kill on a sliver, but I know he's gonna potion, so I went for Moonlight to recover health. On the final turn, he uses Self-Destruct, but our Harden came in handy as we survive on 18 HP before level up. In comes Electrike next, so I outspeed and go for Moonlight before he just uses Howl. I then hit it with Psychic for two-thirds, and now that his attack is so high, I'm like, alright, it's time for Shedinja. Thankfully, he has nothing that can hit us, so his boosts were for nothing. Now, I know what's coming next, and I need to take everything that I can get. I use six double teams in a row while we can to raise evasiveness and then take him down with Scratch. Now keep in mind Magneton does have Shockwave for 100% accuracy, but this is like the only situation against Watson that evasiveness actually helps. The main reason I use Double Team is to avoid 55% accuracy supersonic, and it works for a time as I'm able to bring him to half, but he hits one before we move, but miraculously we don't hit ourselves. Dear lord. I'm forced to switch now, so I go into Heimlich who gets hit by Thunder Wave immediately, but I put a Cherry Berry to cure him. Here I start using Psychic and he paralyzes us again. I bring him to the red, after which he super potions, and I use Moonlight. What follows is a ridiculously long grind, spamming Psychic while timing our Moonlights precisely so we don't get taken out. However, he got a crit on one of his shockwaves that ruined my entire plan. Ugh. I switch Mole back in just to bait the Supersonic so that we don't have our two flying types hit by electric moves, and I switch into Thumper, who I had a person bury on to heal Confusion, but the best I have is Resisted Scratch, and we're brought down to just 16 HP while hardly doing anything. But we do need all the damage that we can get. I next send in Dot, who takes 20 damage, and I use Wish right away as he paralyzes us. Quick Attack also hardly does anything, but Dot was doing incredibly well, stalling him down to the red despite shockwaves, sonic booms, confusion, and paralysis. But then, out of nowhere, Magneton gets a crit at the crucial moment to instantly take Dot down. Ouch. I switch in Atta here and just hit at it with Mega Drain, but we get a crit now to take it down. Two would have killed anyway, but at least we didn't risk a crit that way. With just one Pokemon who wouldn't get killed by Manectric left, I send out Shedinja, who is in fact immune to all of his moves, and I can scratch the hell out of him to win us our third badge. That was insane. A rough crit loss, but I mean, at least it was Illumise, right? While moving on, Thumper ends up learning Swords Dance at level 25, which should be a great help for damage output. We can also pass through Fall Arbor Town to reach the Fossil Maniac's house where we can get the Dig TM. Again, a great asset. At Mount Chimney, we have what looks to be a big challenge as we have to face Maxi. He leads with the Mighty Ena with Intimidate, which is brutal since our whole team is physical attackers at the moment, but I have a plan as I lead with Ada. I instantly use Stun Spore to paralyze him, then Bite does not too much on us. From here, I just spam Mega Drain since it's unaffected by Intimidate and gives us enough recovery to start tipping the balance against him. Eventually, Maxi switches into Zubat out of nowhere though, which is dangerous with Wing Attack, but I'm able to paralyze him before switching into Heimlich, who takes him out with one super effective Psychic after getting hit for a third. In comes a big threat though, Camrupt, and I hit it with Psychic and it hardly does anything. It then goes for Focus Energy and I'm like, oh god. But thankfully no crit after we bring it to half, then I can outspeed and use Moonlight, but then it gets a crit down to just 4 HP. Holy, that was close. Here, I have to switch, so I go into Thumper, and he just went for Tackle to try and kill Heimlich, so now I can outspeed and go for Soft Sand Boosted Dig to take him down. Wow. Mighty Ena is his last Pokemon with that Intimidate again, but Super Effective Leech Life works reasonably well with the recovery. Then on his potion turn, I switch back into Ada to take care of him with the hard counter without Intimidate this time. Scary battle, but we managed it pretty effectively. We next arrive in Lava Ridge Town, the location of the fourth gym, yet another terrifying one being fire type of all things. I theorycrafted for just about as long as I did for Watson's battle and knew there was only one hope. Let's see if we can pull this off. Flannery leads with Numel, and I lead with Ada. I EV trained the hell out of Ada in special defense and HP just for this battle, and it's time to see if it worked. I go for Stun Spore to paralyze, it hits, and then she goes for Magnitude. What in the world? For our strategy to work, I actually need her to hit an overheat, so I hit her with Gust for over half, and she hits one, and we survive on just 14 HP. Oh man, now's our chance. I switch into Heimlich since her special attack gets lowered every time she uses Overheat, so now we can survive another, but she uses Sunny Day. Just what I was fearing. 
However, with the help of Paralysis, Moonlight, and her using Magnitude and Takedown, I'm able to stall out the Sun, but she keeps not using Overheat, so I have to switch into Thumper. She uses Takedown, and I get a Swords Dance off. She misses her next Takedown, so I get another one off, and then she uses Magnitude. I don't understand. She's then paralyzed on the next turn, so I get a final Swords Dance off, and then go for Dig to take her down. With our attack supercharged now, Soft Sand Boosted Dig is able to take down every one of her remaining Pokémon. I don't know why she kept using Magnitude on flying types, but regardless, even if she had used Overheat, I was kinda planning for that anyway so that she'd lower her own special attack hugely, so I think that was a great plan. Four Badges After leaving the gym, May gives us the Go Goggles, something that would've been really helpful before this gym as it opens up a new encounter for us. We can now access the desert part of Route 111, and luckily enough the Mirage Tower is present, which we can climb to the top of in order to pick up the Claw Fossil. We can then bring it to the Devon Corporation scientist to have him revive it into an awesome Anorith, which I nicknamed Flick. Flick has a relaxed nature, plus defense and minus speed, which is kinda bad as I wanted to get its speed as high as possible, but hey, now we have a way to counter fire and flying types, both of which have been huge threats so far. Upon returning to Petalbreak City and doing some grinding, it's time to face the fifth gym leader, our very own father, Norman, the normal type trainer. He says, I'm so happy I can have a battle against my own child. But, a battle is a battle. I will do everything in my power as gym leader to win. Daddy, chill. What the hell is even that?! Norman's team is incredibly powerful, and he leads with a Spinda as I lead with Molt. Now, Spinda has Teeter Dance, which could confuse us, but I put a Person Berry on Molt to prevent that, and all I wanted to do was outspeed and confuse him with Confuse Ray, but he immediately switches into Slacking. What the hell? Even for when he did switch, I was planning for him to switch into Vigoroth since it's next on his party order and does have Faint Attack. Hmm. Well, at least Slacking's now confused as I have to switch since it has Faint Attack too, so I go into Thumper. On his Truant turn, I get a Swords Dance off, then I go for Dig. Now Dig is an amazing move against Truant Pokémon since if you time it properly, you can make sure you're underground on their attacking turns so they can never hit you. Now I was trying to get him into healing range so I could get another needed Swords Dance off, but I forgot about his Citrus Berry, so after a long grind, we ended up accidentally taking it down. Not good. Spinda comes back out next, and Dig is thankfully a one-hit KO. In comes Vigoroth next though, and I have no choice here, so I go for Dig, and because we didn't get the additional Swords Dance off, it survives, then goes for a Slash, but amazingly doesn't get the crit off, we survive on just 21 HP, and then can outspeed him with another attack. His final Pokémon is Linoon, which could destroy us, so I switch into Molt, as this is the one Pokémon on his team that can't touch us, so a few scratches do the job after he belly drums. Whew, a bit messier than what our plan was, but it worked out. After Wally's dad bribes us to keep taking care of his idiot son by giving us the survey gem, we can head back to Mount Jimny to pick up the meteorite. This allows us to trade it to Professor Cosmo in exchange for the return TM, a great 102 power move at max friendship. Before the next city, we have another rival battle with Mei, with her team growing stronger each time. She leads with a Pelipper, which is quite a big threat for us, but I lead with Thumper. From my experience, May usually goes for Protect on the first turn, so I go for Swords Dance, which works out perfectly. I then go for another as she merely uses Mist, and then another as she hits a Supersonic, however, I had prepared with a Person Berry. With our attack at max, I then hit it with Slash for the one-hit KO, and Thumper is then able to one-hit KO her Combuskin with Dig, followed by her Lombre with Slash after we just got hit by Fake Out. If Pelipper had gone for Wing Attack right off the bat, that could have been dangerous, but thank god for that Protect strat that she uses quite consistently. With that, we arrive in Fortree City, one of my favorite places in any Pokémon game. Although, this might change that. The Fortree Gym is definitely among the most terrifying for us being a flying gym, but I make sure to teach Flick the Rock Tomb TM we got from Roxanne, which helps significantly for the gym trainers themselves, and is the only way to get Anorith a Rock move at this point. After defeating all the trainers safely, it's time for the gym leader, Winona. Her team is crazy with five flying types, and I'm not feeling good about this at all. The big problem is her Skarmory, which we can't get a single super effective move against it on any of our Pokémon. I theorycraft for a long time before going with our best plan. She leads with a Swablu, and I send out Flick. We instantly outspeed and take it down with a Stab Rock Tomb. A good start. Her Pelipper comes out next, kind of unfortunate as it has super effective water guns, so I switch into Thumper as she misses Supersonic. I decide to load up on Sword Stance here, similar to what we did against Maze, as she also uses Protect, however Slash doesn't KO and she hits us with Supersonic, but I had a Person Berry again, so one more does the trick. 
In comes Tropius next, which we hit to below half with Slash, but no crit, and she slams us with Aerial Ace to below half before we can KO her. In comes Altaria next, and we have no shot here, so I'm forced to switch into Flick, who is our only Pokemon not weak to flying. We tank Aerial Ace with over half, hit her with Rock Tomb to a quarter, we get hit again down to just 18 HP before our berry, and then we can take her out with one more. Her final Pokemon is the big threat, Skarmory. Knowing she'll go for Steel Wing, I switch into Ada, who tanks it with over half, but then we miss a Stun Spore and get hit with Sand Attack. Thankfully, we land the next one, but she hits us with Aerial Ace, and we survive on just 8 HP. I'm forced to switch, so I go into Heimlich, who tanks Aerial Ace with just about half, but I know I can outspeed and go for Harden, but she stays paralyzed anyway. I start loading up on Harden's here, which is made possible by the Paralysis, and whenever we get too low on health, I can use Moonlight. I eventually start using Psychic, hoping for the special defense drop, and I make sure to try and keep us at high health so we can survive an Aerial Ace crit if need be. As crazy as it may seem, my goal here is to stall her 20 Aerial Ace power points out. Eventually, Psychic brings her to the red, but she uses a Hyper Potion, and we have one last Psychic. I start spamming Gust instead, and the Sand Attacks are making damage output nearly impossible. After what felt like an hour of this with no Moonlights left, she starts using Fury Attack, meaning we've accomplished our goal. From here, I can switch in Molt, who's immune to all her moves, land a Confuse Ray, and start whittling her down with Scratch. Eventually, we get her to the red again, but she Hyper Potions yet again. Oh no. Essentially, what I do from here is use all of our Leech Life and Scratch Power Points, and then spam Double Team as well. I need to stall out her Steel Wing power points so I can switch, but the key is that I can't have her use Struggle because that can even hit Ghost types and hits through Wonder Guard too. My key indicator though is when she starts using Sand Attack, because our accuracy was already at its lowest so I know that she ran out of everything else, meaning it's safe to switch Flick in to finally, finally get the KO with Rock Tomb. Unbelievable. I think that was honestly the only way we could have beaten Skarmory, and even this was risky as hell. Before moving on, I head back to Doofertown, as this guy here appears only after you get the 5th badge to give you the Sludge Bomb TM, which provides some great stab power for Heimlich. With that, we can head to the Safari Zone, which is actually where we can get our next encounter. In Area 3, you can get a Pinsir, and in Area 4, you can get Heracross. Ultimately, I decide to go for Area 4, because fighting stab would be very helpful, and we do find a Heracross. The key thing with Safari Zone encounters, though, is to actually catch them, and thankfully we do on the second ball. I nickname him Hopper, and Hopper has a sassy nature, plus special defense and minus speed. Minus speed is terrible, but we'll take it. I teach Hopper Thief so we can get some type boosting items, including the Spell Tag, which is a 5% chance on Wild Shuppet in Mount Pyre. Through using the Match Call feature, you can also grab the Black Belt to boost fighting moves from this trainer here, exclusively on the fourth rematch with him, which is crazy. Mount Pyre also grants us the Shadow Ball TM, which is a physical move in this gen, so it should be a great help. Arriving in Lily Cove, it's time for our final May battle, and oh, fuck off, Lau. May's team is even scarier now, but now that we have Flick, we can smash Tropius into Rock Tombs, her Pelipper doesn't have any water moves, so it goes down into attacks as well, then her Combuscan gets hit by Rock Tomb, but then uses Bulk Up, so I'm forced to switch. I go into Heimlich, who tanks Peck, and can respond with Super Effective Psychic for the KO. Her final Pokemon is Ludicolo, and now with super effective Stab Sludge Bomb, we can take it out in two attacks, only being brought to a third in the process by a crit. Solid. <clears throat> so, you come here often? Oh god, you work here, of course you do. Okay, I'm, I'm so sorry. In the Jagged Pass hideout, we encounter Magma Leader Maxi, who leads with the Mighty Ina, so I lead with our newly obtained Hopper. Even though he has Intimidate, this is still our most reliable option, so I use Brick Break, but he barely survives and hits us with Swagger. With a raised attack though, breaking through confusion allows us to take him out after he heals. In comes Crobat next, so I switch into Flick, and thankfully we survive Air Cutter with just above half. He then goes for Wing Attack, and we survive on just 4 HP to one hit KO him with Hearthstone boosted Ancient Power. That thing could have swept our entire team. His final Pokemon is Camera, so I go into Hopper who actually has good special defense. In the end, he's only able to do a quarter damage on us with Ember as we got a crit on our third Brick Break after he healed. We quickly arrive in Moss Deep City where the 7th gym is, and during the long grind, Flick finally evolves into a beastly Armaldo. It's time for the next gym leaders, Tate and Liza. Now you would think this would be an easy time since they have a psychic team and we have a bug one, but literally none of their psychic types are weak to bug. Madness. I lead with Flick and Hopper, our best choices since Claydol has ancient power, and Claydol uses Earthquake which doesn't do much on either of us. 
Ancient Power one-shots Zatu, and in comes Lunatone. Now here's part of my plan. I used Thief on Lunatone for Hopper to steal his Citrus Berry, and I attached the Metal Coat on Flick so Metal Claw does huge damage on it. Brick Break takes it out on the next turn, and Claydol hits us with Earthquake before we land Metal Claw on Soul Rock. Hopper's newly obtained Citrus Berry heals him though, and Flick is too low on health, so I switch into Atta. Brick Break takes out Soul Rock, and then from here, Earthquake can't hit Atta, and then on the next turn, I can outspeed with Miracle Seed boosted Giga Drain, survive an Ancient Power in the red, then one more does the job. What a crazy battle for a type that's supposed to be weak to our entire team. In this house, this guy's like, my sister exchanges mail with her boyfriend in Fortree. I don't envy her one bit at all. <laughs> what a savage dude. In the Seafloor Cavern, we can pick up a crucial TM, Earthquake, and then we have a final evil team battle with leader Archie. He leaves with the Mighty Ina, and this time I leave with Heimlich since we have super effective Stab Silverwind now. He does hit us with Swagger though, and we hit ourselves in Confusion, and then he hits us with Takedown, but thanks to the attack raise, we can KO him with one more. In comes Crobat, and Flick is the perfect switch, smashing him to death with Ancient Power after a bit of Confusion trouble that brought us below half. Sharpedo is his final Pokemon, and Hopper is the perfect counter here, one hit KOing him with Brick Break. After the legendary Groudon and Kyogre fight about whether pancakes or waffles are better, we hit up Pacific Log to pick up a second return TM, which if you're doing your own Gen 3 run can be very helpful, so I thought I'd mention it. I love Pacific Log. Alright, I'm out of here. Hello there, can I interest you in a... Oh, okay, bye. Back in Sutopolis, we have the 8th and final gym leader, Juan, and... Uh, well, I led with Thumper with a Person Berry, started loading up on Swords Dance, and he kept using Water Pulse followed by Attract, but now that we have Baton Pass, I can switch into my ultimate plan, Molt, who avoids Water Pulse, and thanks to the Speed Boost Pass, can now outspeed and one-hit KO every damn Pokemon on his team with either Leech Life or Shadow Ball. Incredible stuff. Juan offers us his outfit after the battle, and I'm not gonna lie, I'd try and rock that fit if given the opportunity. He then silently gives us his phone number and doesn't say a word. I know where this is going. And I l We quickly arrive at the Evergrande City and pass through Victory Road, during which we have our final battle with Wally, which looks kinda tough to be honest. One thing I made sure to do was check if Shedinja was truly a great counter for Gardevoir, and good thing I did, as it turns out Future Sight can hit through Wonder Guard. Sheesh. Wally leads with Altaria, so I lead with Flick, who instantly one hit KOs it with Hearthstone boosted Ancient Power. Delcat is then handled by a switch into Hopper with Brick Break, even though it had to use Charm to lower our attack. Gardevoir then comes in, so I switch in Atta as he uses Future Sight. Double Team causes us to miss Silverwind as he goes for Calm Mind. We then take the Future Sight to about half, and now I'm forced to switch, so I go into Thumper, and he used a full restore so I can land two slashes in a row to KO since he just used Future Sight again. Magneton comes in next, so I switch into Flick to take Thunderbolt and the Future Sight attack to just 18 HP, damn that was close, and then go back into Hopper to tank Thunderbolt and KO with Brick Break. His final Pokemon is Rosalia, who is taken out by a few horn attacks for the win. With that, we arrive at our final test, the Pokemon League. After upgrading our moves, picking up any needed items, and fulfilling the rest of our EVs, it's showtime. The first Elite Four member is Sydney, the Dark-type trainer. Him leading with Intimidate Mightyena is a problem, and Heracross would have been a great option, but his Absol has 4 times super effective Aerial Ace, so I send out Ada to paralyze him, and then switch in Thumper who gets hit by Double Edge to below half. We get a Swords Dance off, get hit again to just 13 HP, but now I can Baton Pass the speed and attack to Heimlich, who proceeds to sweep his entire team with Silverwind. What a savage. Next up is Phoebe, the Ghost Trainer. Initially, I was thinking this could be a tough one with her crazy bulk and Shedinja not being an option due to all her Pokemon having ghost moves, but I remembered her first Dusclops usually uses Protect to start, so I get a Swords Dance off with Thumper, and since I have a Person Berry, I know I can go for another one, but she just used Protect again anyway, so we can proceed to sweep through her entire team with Shadow Ball we taught using the TM. <laughs> Amazing. The third Elite Four member is Glacia, and I thought for a long time about how to beat her team with Crazy Bulk, but eventually realized, I think Hopper can just do this. My only worry was her first Pokemon having Encore, and I have to get a bulk up off to guarantee KOs, but as I expected, she went for Hail, so I got one off and swept her entire team with super effective Stab Brick Break. Not a bad start so far, I would say. The final Elite Four member is Drake, whose team is unbelievably powerful, and Salamence is a massive threat for us. After coming up with our best strategy, it's time. 
I know his Shellgon tends to use Protect, so I send out Hopper and get a bulk up off, and then go for a second one as it just hits us with Double Edge. Brick Break is then a one-hit KO, and in comes his Flygon next, which is perfect as we can outspeed and KO it as well. In comes Altaria next, part of the reason bulk up was necessary. We can use Facade here for big damage, and then 4 times super effective stab Aerial Ace doesn't do too much to us due to our increased defense. We could KO here, but I want to prepare in advance for his next Pokemon, so I switch Flick in. After getting hit by Dragon Breath, Ancient Power takes him out, and gets the Omni Boost. Amazing! However, Kingdra comes out next, not Salamence. Even with the boost, I'm not feeling very confident, so I switch into Holt here who can't get hurt by it, but then he preemptively switches into Salamence. Oh man, I did go for Confuse Ray first, which is good, and I now switch into Thumper hoping he'll hurt himself and we can set something up, but he hits a Dragon Claw. Uh-oh. We don't even get the speed boost this turn either, so I decide to switch into Heimlich, who seems to be our only option really, and thankfully it hurts himself this time. Here I go for Toxic as he hurts himself again, and with Moonlight and Sludge Bomb, I'm able to take him to the red after Poison since I forgot about his Citrus Berry which allowed him to survive. This was a grave miscalculation on my part, and I just Toxic him again before he hits us hard with Flamethrower for the KO. Ouch. I switch into Flick here, and he just went for Rock Slide which we survive, and Ancient Power does the job thanks to the Poison damage. His final Pokemon is Kingdra, who can't touch Molt at all, so I switch into him for a few Shadow Balls to end the battle. It's time for the final battle, the champion, Wallace. His team is incredibly bulky and has surprisingly good type coverage, but I think I have a plan. He leads with Wailord, which has no super effective moves against Molt, so a few Shadow Balls do the trick. I was worried that he'd rain dance, but he kept trying to attack us for some reason. In comes Tentacruel, who has Toxic, so I switch into Hopper purposefully to activate our Guts ability to power up our attack. Amazing. Earthquake is then an easy KO from there. Whiskash is then handled in two Brick Breaks as he just used Amnesia, with Toxic bringing us below half. Ludicolo then barely survives a Brick Break, and as it turns out, Facade would have done 3% more damage, which might have actually KO'd. A mistake on my part, but now I can switch in Ada for the eventual Aerial Ace KO, which can't miss since he was spamming Double Team. Ha. Gotcha. In comes Milotic next, so I go for Giga Drain after being poisoned. Ice Beam hits us hard, but we get one more Giga Drain off, and it's not doing too much, to be honest. There's nothing I can do here, though, since everything I have will get two hit KO'd, so I have to sack Ada to an Ice Beam. Here, our only option is to get one last massive attack off with Hopper, so I send him in for a 140 base power, guts boosted facade with poison to destroy it, but we lose Hopper to poison as Gyarados comes in. This allows me to send in Molt though, who's immune to everything, and this is the reason I wanted to keep him alive until now. With that, we've defeated the champion with just three Pokemon remaining. Now, we have technically beaten the game and completed the challenge, however, there's one final test that we can face. For those of you unfamiliar with Emerald, an old friend is waiting for us in the deepest parts of Meteor Falls. After leveling up to the new cap of 78 and finally catching a Masquerade named Flora now that we have access to swarms, it's time. The former champion of Hoenn awaits, Steven Stone. With only four Pokemon left against the strongest team in the game, I'm terrified, but I think I have a pretty foolproof plan. He leaves with Skarmory, a Pokemon that we just love to see, don't we? But I send in Masquerade for the Intimidate against it. Here, I paralyze it with Stun Spore and then start hammering it with Ice Beam, but it went for Spikes out of nowhere. I thought he'd just spam Aerial Ace, but oh well. I switch into Thumper as he hits us with Toxic, and now that he's intimidated and paralyzed, we have a good chance to get a Swords Dance off as we're brought below half even after our berry. Here, I baton pass our speed and attack to Flick, who takes it out with Ancient Power. We can then decimate his Cradily in one hit with Brick Break, followed by his own Armaldo with Ancient Power. In comes Claydol next, and Return is a smashing KO as well. Holy, Flick is a beast! I thought he'd send out Aggron here, which would have been an easy KO, but instead he sends out Metagross. I have no choice though, so I go for Brick Break and it does about half, but then he misses Meteor Mash, but his berry brings him to just above half. I go for Brick Break again, hoping for the high roll, but we don't get it and he smashes Flick to death with Meteor Mash. Now this is the whole problem with this battle now. Molt dies immediately to spikes upon switching. He could have taken out Metagross easily, but now my entire plan is shot. The full restore here was brutal too, as Flora ended up paralyzing and confusing Metagross, which is amazing, but got smashed by Meteor Mash regardless. 
I send in our last chance, Thumper, and get off a Shadow Ball, but he breaks through both Paralysis and Confusion to end our hopes and dreams. If we had Metagross hit itself in Confusion more, if we had gotten the Ancient Power boost, or his Skarmory stayed paralyzed one turn, or didn't use Spikes, we would have had that, but it wasn't meant to be. Regardless, we beat a Pokemon Emerald Hardcore Nuzlocke with only Bug types, and I am satisfied. That was a really tough run. I hope you had fun with the run, and if you did, don't forget to hit that subscribe button as it really helps and grows our community. A huge thanks to my YouTube members and patrons who make these videos possible. If you'd like to support and get your name up here, the links are also down below. If you enjoy, drop a like down below to help the video out, and leave a comment letting me know what kind of run we should do next, and I'll see you guys for our next challenge video.